Perplexity just released Perplexity Labs, which is kind of like Claude Artifacts or ChatGPT's Canvas. So I'm gonna use that to talk about the current state of Frontier AI. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna look at the feature set, models, and pricing of every company. And then I'm gonna tell you what I think is the best value for money. And essentially Perplexity Labs is kind of like a mix of deep research and artifacts. You give it a task, it will go do tons of research, and then build something for you if you ask it to build something. I did this prompt right here saying, I wanna create graphics like web pages for state-of-the-art frontier AI companies and features. I gave it some examples. I gave it the companies I wanted to look for, Google, Anthropic, X, Perplexity Meta. It took about 15 minutes and it did a bunch of research. It gave me this page to click onto. You could see all the research it did. And by the way, we're talking about consumer facing right now. We're not talking about API pricing. So OpenAI, let's click on this one. So here we have OpenAI. The main models of today are GPT 4.1, O3, O4 Mini. I think it should probably have 4.0 here as well. The bottom line is Perplexity Labs isn't perfect, but it does a lot of cool things. Let's look at pricing. So there's two pricing plans here, the $20 a month and the $200 a month. Now, based on which plan you have, you get access to Codex, Operator, Sora, advanced voice mode, tasks, and I'm sure there's things that it missed here. I really love the O3 model. I like using deep research. I love advanced voice mode and Codex is pretty cool. Okay, let's go to Google, which in my opinion is probably the best value for money right now, but I'm not paying for it. Google has a bunch of models. It pulled out here the main ones, Gemma, Gemini 2.5 Flash, and Gemini 2.5 Pro. What stands out about these models are its context windows, a million tokens, and up to two million tokens. It's fast, it's smart. Some of its standout features are deep research, which is now better than OpenAI's deep research, VO3, video generation tool, which is much better than OpenAI Sora, Notebook LM, which is one of my favorite features. And it has other things like Project Mariner, Project Astra. They keep changing the names. Google's doing a lot of great things. I'm actually really excited for their new XR glasses. And their pricing is very similar to OpenAI's. $20 a month for their pro plan, but $250 a month for their ultra plan. And the ultra plan is where you get access to VO3, which is the main reason I'm thinking of crossing over because I want to try it out. Then we have Anthropic, the makers of Claude, one of my favorite models. So Anthropic just released Clopus 4 and Clonet 4, probably still the best coding models. If you follow the channel, you know I'm pretty annoyed with Anthropic and their rate limits, but it is what it is. I still always go back to Claude. They just released their own voice mode. It doesn't feel as great as OpenAI's, but I see the potential here and I can't wait till they add full MCP support. I love connecting MCPs. The ability to connect Claude to all these external tools and services is super powerful and it's improved my workflow tenfold. I just made a video about my favorite MCP servers. Claude Code is probably the best agentic coding platform, especially now that it works great with Cursor, but it's really expensive. And Claude Code, you're paying per API. This is actually a fail by Perplexity. The pro plan is at about 18 to $20 a month, and the max plan is either 100 or $200 a month. And with the max plan, you can use it towards Claude Code. So I think if you're a coder developer, and that's what you're doing for a profession to, to make money, Claude is the best AI for you. But it doesn't have all the features of OpenAI and Google. Then the bottom we have XAI, also known as Grok. To be completely honest, this is the one tool I don't really use. There's a lot of hype around it, but every time I tried it, I was pretty underwhelmed. Next we have Perplexity. For a long time, Perplexity was actually my most used AI tool because it was the only one that could use an LLM and search the internet. But in the last few months, ChatGPT got it, Claude got it, Gemini got it, everyone got it. But I still think that Perplexity gives the best internet search results. I just use the other tools because they offer more. Perplexity is great. They have a very generous free plan. I used them for free for over a year before I upgraded to Pro and it was more than five for me. They just released this tool called Perplexity Labs, which kind of makes it similar to Claude's Artifacts. As you see, it's an interactive website. It's really cool. My one gripe with it is once it gives you an output, an interactive element, and you try and improve it a bit, it doesn't do a good job. It won't iterate on what it already built. So it'll just give you a brand new element. I'm hoping they'll add some type of version control or more of a way to guide and steer it. But I think it's really cool. And this was done in a single prompt, so yeah. Lastly, we have Meta, Facebook, What's cool about Meta is they open source their models, or at least that's what they did in the beginning, which gave the ability for developers and everybody to fine tune and make their own models. Their recent model, Llama 4 Scout, has a context window of 10 million tokens, but I'm not able to really run any of these models in a meaningful way. Where I use Meta the most is not in Instagram, not in WhatsApp, not on Facebook, it's actually with these glasses. And I've talked briefly about the Meta Ray-Ban smart glasses. I wear them all the time. I use the AI maybe once or twice a day, not that much, but as an iPhone user, it is better than Siri. It's easier to trigger than advanced voice mode, Claude voice mode, perplexity voice mode. And it's pretty cool to talk to John Cena.
My workflow is mainly Anthropic Claude. That's my go-to because of its MCP support, because I like the way it writes, because I think it's still the best coder. Then I use OpenAI's O3. It is a great model all around. It just puts out a few too many tables for me. I also love OpenAI's advanced voice mode. And then I use Google Gemini, but mainly in AI Studio. So I also have perplexity to do a comparison here, but it doesn't look that good. If we look at the pricing, there's a mistake here because it shouldn't reference tokens. It should be $100 or $200, depending on which max plan you choose. Also perplexity is $20 a month. So just to break it down, here are the top three, which I think first should be Google, most expensive, but has many features and is just killing it in AI all of a sudden. Then OpenAI, $200 a month, also tons of features, very solid. But if you're coding and your main thing is development, I'd say spring for the $100 or $200 Anthropic Claude max plan. Despite all my problems with the rate limits, they're still the best model for coding. Okay, so if you're not paying for any of the AIs yet, and you don't want to spring for the $100 to $250 premium AI plans, so they all do also have free plans. But if you're just using the free plan, you're not gonna get anything meaningful out of it. You'll hit those rate limits really quickly and just be cut off. They all also have pro plans around $20. So I suggest springing for at least a $20 plan. Until recently, I would say just go for the $20 ChatGPT plan, but Google's Gemini has become super powerful and it's connected to all of its various products and offerings. And also Anthropus Claude just got voice mode. Claude is my favorite, but I think all of them are really great and I think it's worth trying them out. Wrapping this whole thing up about Perplexity Labs, I think it's really cool. I think that now that all the major AI companies and models support web search, Perplexity has to up its game. It's a great start. It's not perfect, but I'm going to keep playing with it. When it comes to ChatGPT Canvas, Cloud Artifacts, or Perplexity Labs, I actually think ChatGPT has the best implementation because they're able to edit it within the Canvas itself. So that's my take. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.